is a uh, interesting rum raisin liquor. It's so sweet. It actually tastes kind of like a, a loaf of <laughs> Whoa, rum raisin cool. bread. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> would that be like? Would that, that be like an Irish like loaf bread? Of <laughs> yeah, Irish, Irish soda bread or something. Soda bread, yeah. Is it good? Delicious. Yeah, nice. I thought it maybe needed to be mixed, and then people are like online saying, "No, straight is great." Oh, I mean, it's yeah. true. straight is great. And look at you, Mr. And that only applies to alcohol. <laughs> just to be clear, guys. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <clears throat> Wait, now I want to taste a sip. Oh yes. What uh, what flavor? Taste do you get? a sip. Just um. Chocolate. Although the other one also looked like it was chocolate. <laughs> I, I think it was coffee. Oh, was is that what that was? I was like, yeah. did it say some other language or yeah. something? But this was the chocolate one. Also, I like the little bottle. It looks like a potion bottle. I know. Right? Is well, it like actually, Felix it, tastes, right it yeah. tastes good. It look, yeah, that's the gold. Everything is good. Yep. Good luck. Wow. <laughs> that's why everything's going to work. Gold, it's everything really is well good. <laughs> no tech issues. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's just because you're drunk that's why everything goes <laughs> yeah. well for you because you don't even yeah. know what's going on that's really what liquid <laughs> is yeah the liquid mm. really strong alcohol so everything just feels like it's everything is just yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> is I mean, that what it is in the books did i miss that <laughs> no. no that's <laughs> my that's my interpretation uh, yeah, we don't know, yeah, honestly because i'm like you know what doing? <laughs> you know <laughs> I was going to say drugging the kids. That's not. But they board. basically did do that a bunch of times. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And it's it is actually kind of, serum. like they say that you shouldn't take liquid luck all the time. But I'm like, I feel like there's a lot of times where they just should, they should just take it. <laughs> like half the times when they're going to get there's a There's a lot of times they right. should just. Like why? <laughs> why not? Like, you know, when you're in these crazy, um, yeah, like heists when you're trying to get a horcrux. Yep. Just knock back some liquid luck and everything's going to go good for you. Mm -hmm. Why don't yeah. they do that? Why didn't Dumbledore do that? <laughs> Maybe Dumbledore did do them. that. Yeah, I know. Come on, guys. Send them a text. It's kind of <laughs> crazy. Hey, Hermione. <laughs> that is um, weird. <laughs> I should have went to Slughorn to get more. I know. That's true. Mm. I can use it for can everything. We trust him? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask that's a question. I'm Why? You ask. just uh, <laughs> point me to the <laughs> potion. You that. <laughs> that's where you go. It's funny how all my questions really have transitioned through this book. My questions now are: Do we trust this person? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because of Danny. Well, yeah, especially him. He's he's the. By the end of this chapter, we're like, ooh, do we trust him? We, we, all of us collectively, right, guys? <laughs> he was in the. <laughs> I uh, need a refresh. Although I did think this that. Is why the questions are funny. I'm like, <laughs> who was in this chapter? So you still don't trust him. Um, Danny uh, doesn't trust anyone. I know it's kind of so true, it's but not here's really the thing: that big of a deal. What's not fair, or well, what is fair but feels weird, is that part of the reason I don't trust him is because subconsciously I don't trust Dumbledore. Dumbledore is the one who brought him in. Um, but then again, Dumbledore may have only needed him to get the information about yeah. Horcruxes and be, it was maybe yeah. never trust, but he did go to him even when they were, you know, well, I guess he thought he was being chased by Death Eaters and stuff. So there's something weird going on and I'm like, I don't know. But then I wasn't that psyched about the way he was acting, um, when they were yeah, sacking Snape. For sure. He was, was like, like slow on the run. Oof. He got there late, you know? Yep. And it felt a little on purpose. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that line. That's so, a, do you, but you don't trust Dumbledore. No, you know what? I, I would love to say that I do, but in the way I'm interpreting certain things, upon reflection, I realize I do not mm -hmm. fully trust him or I would be viewing some of this stuff differently. Um, that and that's why he hasn't I'm, you know, shared a lot of information. Yeah, yeah, because he didn't share. But even the stuff with Aberforth where I'm like, oh, his own brother does not have the best view of him. Thought he had bad motives with... Um, his sister. His sister. And then we kind of are comparing that to Harry. Um, and whether it's manipulation or like pride or whatever else. And then even though everything with Grindelwald, we're, we're left with more questions. So by the end of whatever book, I'll say five, definitely six, we're left thinking like, wow, Dumbledore's the best. We love mm -hmm. Dumbledore. But then since then, it's been a pretty sharp decline yeah. down of like, oh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Did he know about this? Did he know about that? 
was it wise to listen to him and not tell anyone about this hunt for Horcruxes? Um, was he giving advice that should be adhered to like without question or is it smarter to and question? another one you're like, is he, what is he hiding? Because he's yeah. hiding things in his personal life. So is he, was he hiding something from Harry? Is Dumbledore really the wizard that they need to like the throne rather than. And it's not like, really is he hiding things? Chapters. He is hiding things. The question is yeah. how much and why? So, why? yep. I don't know. But accidentally, I don't trust Dumbledore that much. No, no, I shouldn't even say that much. Not fully. I'll call it 85%. Hmm. It's going to be a very fun discussion that we're going to have on Dumbledore. When all said and done. But I feel bad. I want to trust him. <laughs> Did Tony put a thing in your mind? Plant a seed. Uh, maybe. What did he say again? Yeah, he, uh, I forget. But Yeah, I remember that. He said something about... Well, you know what else, though? I think Tony was being a little clever and trying to lean into the story of that book. That's what I thought as mm -hmm. he said it. But maybe it's better. I don't what remember what he said. Yeah, it, it was something. something yeah, it. it was like something like about man, Dumbledore. Like manipulating. But, and, yeah, and but I thought he was else. being a little cheeky about like trying to play devil's advocate or be like, well, I don't know. What do you think about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think of him as being like, giving an honest commentary on all the books. I thought of it more of like he was leaning into my lack of knowledge and poking fun at like, you don't know anything. Can you trust him? Kind of like John does to us every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Liz, Maybe. I do this podcast with uh, an, another uh, hmm. person. She lambasts me because she's like, you just gaslight me every single time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah, that's I think that's I'm my sorry. way. Yeah. That's awesome. What are we do on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll ask all these questions when we get there. But welcome to the podcast. I'm John, Chen, Danny, and Kristen, and this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. Um, and uh, we're just discussing one chapter, so you know this is gonna go super quick, guys. Um, but <laughs> discussing one chapter, then we're listening, so it should be yeah, um, nice. It should go the same length as the normal podcast. <laughs> um, but this chapter kind of opens up with McGonagall and the Caros. But what is your what is your impression of the Caros and what is your impression of McGonagall here? We're going to talk about all the people that kind of pop up in this chapter. Wait, what is the summary? So when Harry goes in, remember the, the chapter? Oh, yeah, sorry. We forgot the yeah, that's like what the, I'm trying. The big time. <laughs> You're like, what is the summary of what we're going through? Yeah, what's the summary of this chapter? I didn't write one either, I but <laughs> I think with our collective minds, we can get there. Yes. So obviously the title is The Sacking of Severus Snape. Um and that is the end result of the chapter, but it's about how we get there. Um, like you said, with McGonagall, and they were in the Ravenclaw um, common room. Common room? Mm -hmm. um, and then they kind of had a kerfuffle with the one Caro, and then the other one was coming. <laughs> and it was just kind of like, I don't know. I feel like one thing after another where it kept escalating, and we weren't sure, and then we didn't know how everyone else was going to react but harry's saying i need your help mcgonagall and then all of a sudden snape's there and a fight's breaking out and um we it felt like the tension of some of these teachers even flitwick getting involved where snape was genuinely scared like he like kind of bolted and then um we're left with feeling like horace didn't react the best yeah. so this is like the chapter of just back-to-back -back action lots of suspense not knowing how things were going to turn um because once things start get going um it gets a little hectic <laughs> it does get a little hectic yeah mm -hmm. um, but no nobody nobody died nobody's in a wait actually what happened to the caros where are they they're still they're knocked strong, out yeah they're strong yeah like yeah okay good out, good uh, so only bad tired, guys yeah. ended up in comas yeah, or yeah. Uh, magical comas <laughs> um and this is when percy comes back at the end of the chapter too so we kind of love that that's a nice oh, little yeah, yeah, addition yeah. Oh, right. um so there's a few other things. Yeah, we'll talk about all those kind of things, but a uh, good summary. But what is your initial impression of McGonagall and the Caros? The Caros seem crazy, especially because they're going to... They So the chapter kind of opens, they touch the mark, and then I know Luna comes and stuns them. McGonagall then comes in with the the, uh, the other sibling of the Caros, and they want to blame um, the uh, touching of the dark mark on the students, and McGonagall's like, no way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, mm. She has this great line, and she says, uh, "We can push it off on the kids." Said Amicus, his pig-like face suddenly crafty. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll say Electo was ambushed by the kids. Them kids up there, 
He looked up at the starry ceiling toward the dormitories and will say they forced her to press her mark and that's why he's got a false alarm. He can punish them. Couple of kids, more or less, what's the difference? The <laughs> only difference between truth and lies, courage and cowardice, said Professor McGonagall. Oh, great Who had line. turned pale. A difference in short, which you and your sister seem unable to appreciate. <laughs> but let me make one thing very clear. You are not going to pass off your many ineptitudes on the students of Hogwarts. I shall not permit it. Nice. Oh my God, I, I know, she's great. Yep. What do you think of the, what do you think of the Karas and what do you think of McGonagall here? They remind me of the what are the the brothers that were with the Draco Malfoy? The, the or maybe they're not brothers. Oh, Crab and Goyle. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, That's yeah. what they like remind me of. Yeah. <clears throat> but grown up in size and stature. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not their mind. Yeah. I love McGonagall here though. Her standing up for uh Oh, the kids, yeah. yeah. the kids. She was clever, too, though. I forget. Didn't she say, like, how they got it? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Wasn't she, like, playing it off, though, with, like, the one Caro? McGonagall? Yeah. Yeah. Like, she made, yeah. like, a store. I don't know. But it's nice that she sticks up for them mm. and is protecting them. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about this part where she says, but isn't your sister in there? Didn't Professor Flitwick let her in earlier this evening at your urgent request? Perhaps she could open the door for you. Then you needn't wait yes. yeah. the castle. Just being cheeky. Yeah, it's great. Yes, that was <laughs> it. Thank you. <laughs> like there was something she did. I, I remember. <laughs> and then there, there's another like kind of shocking moment in this chapter where um, <clears throat> it says, it's not a case of what you'll permit Minerva McGonagall. Your time's over. It's us, what's in, it's us what's in charge here now. And you'll back me up or you'll pay the price. And he spat in her face. Ugh. Harry yeah. pulled a cloak off himself, raised his wand, and said, you shouldn't have done that. As Amethyst oh, spun around, yeah. Harry yeah. shouted, Crucio. <laughs> what do you think about that? Harry's using the unforgivable curse. He's used one before, but what do you think about you? He should practice. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> oh, my. It... He's defended Mama with McGonagall. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I it didn't know. really do any. I mean, mm. didn't mm. fully work, right? No, it did. Because he said, I see yeah. what Bellatrix meant. You really need to mean it. Right. I took that as it, like, worked. Yeah. He killed. Wait, I don't remember. No, what Crucio. Crucio. Uh, cru- uh, cr- it's um, like torture. Yeah, torture. About yeah, I was going to say yeah. crucifying. Oh. <laughs> torture, not that. Yeah. But what did he. Oh, really? So we tortured them, yeah, him in that moment. Did you take it a different way? I like, took it as like it like stunned them kind of and didn't really like fully work. Mm. And that's why he's saying, "Oh, you have to mean it," because Harry maybe really didn't really mean yeah, it. Yeah, he was like, mm. it wasn't coming across. Like I was like, "Oh, I try," but like you really have to mean it because I thought I did, but it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. I feel like that is a fair point because it happened so fast. I almost took it more like Harry meant it a lot that mm-hmm. it knocked him out. Like it sent him flying across the room. Yeah. Knocked who out? Into the front of a bookcase, crumpled, yeah. insensible Harry. on the floor. So no, like no, it, worked, the... it worked too well. Yeah, like it was so instant where I'm thinking of a lot of the other instances where we see Crucio it's somebody on the floor in pain just like wriggling around yeah. like trying to make it stop somehow yeah but that's... this was like just one second and he got blasted across the room which felt but you different think that worked i'm thinking harry was so angry that it was like an extreme crucio mm. <laughs> maybe that's not how that's um good, but... <laughs> or there was some wandless magic he was doing a combo thing combo yeah, curse. um because we just haven't seen crucio work like this before yeah. Because I don't know if it did. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. But it still had well, maybe uh, an right. effect. That no, I know, good. but he went flaunt, like, yeah. I always see it as, like, they're, like, in excruciating pain, like, asking them to stop, whereas he just... Right, But right. it says he writhed through the air like a drowning man, thrashing and howling <clears> in pain, <throat> and then with a crunch and a shattering of glass, he, shma- he, sh- he smashed. Smashed. <laughs> smashed. <laughs> oh, boy. He smashed into the front of a bookcase and crumpled, insensible to the floor. Hmm. Maybe I just missed that. Could have been a mixture. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe an ethical question here. What do you do in the face of someone like that? So, these people are 
some of the most reprehensible in the entire book, but you don't get a lot of page time with them. They're torturing students and they're telling other students to torture mm -hmm. them. Like they're doing this to kids. So what does Harry do in this case? Do, do you fight evil with evil here? Do you like crucio them because they cruciate other people? Like, do you like kill them here immediately? Or... I don't know about killing. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know but about killing for sure. The, everything else leading up to it, <laughs> maybe. Because there's no, you can't reason with these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. What would Dumbledore do? Mm. WWDD, you know? <laughs> WWDD. Um, I feel like he would so use weird. controlled um, magic. Like, mm -hmm. this feels like emotion mm -hmm. and, like, anger and a lot of other things. I feel like Dumbledore would think it through more, I'm saying rationally. So, again, thinking of the right way to handle it. Because how do you love someone to death, you know? Or love them to, <laughs> to life? I don't know. Um, so, I don't know if there is another option except fighting fire with fire a little bit. Um, but he did when they were at the ministry. Uh, Dumbledore? Yeah. Well, but he also didn't, though. He didn't crucio anybody. When he went no, in, I, even after okay. like, people are dying, he was, like, wrapping people up with ropes and kind of, like, yeah, capturing but that's, them. I guess that's kind of what But I mean. it only works if you're in control. And Harry yeah. is lucky he didn't get anyone killed. You know, like, when you start fighting like this, it, he's got to just shut this thing down. Okay, but so, what's the age know. difference between Harry and <laughs> Dumbledore? And, and skill difference, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. And skill difference, too. But I'm just saying, theoretically, like, what is the right approach? I guess we're saying, and even the way we talk about it, the right approach is making sure that this evil person has zero time to continue being evil. Mm -hmm. So if that means yeah. okay. knocking them out by sending them flying in pain across the room um, and then tying them magically but up, then so be it. Dumbledore didn't really think things through. You mm -hmm. don't think so? Well, like in these, in certain battles, yes. But like... I don't think he did a great job with like a plan for Harry and if things go if things go wrong, do X, Y, and Z. I guess mm. we'll have to wait and see what opens at what close. <laughs> Cause <laughs> these are the things where I'm like, does he have a plan? Because you're kinda right. Mm. I'm even thinking of when Fudge was in his office and like, he did that big like wham bam and then flew away. He had like that you, cool moment. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a big old thank you, ma'am. And I felt like that was another example of he didn't cause, I don't think he caused pain, but he had thought through what he was going to do and was able to execute it just quickly and kind of, you know, instantly. And I don't think we've seen him cause pain. Um, have we? Dumbledore? Hmm. Wait. Was there something... I'm trying to think of when this happened where he was going... It was left blank. We needed an answer... He went somewhere and came oh, back yeah. with an answer, and it left us wondering: Did he torture somebody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But what was the thing? That's the only time I can think of off the top of my head. Um, he, he needed to get the memory somewhere. of um, uh, Ogden. I think. Hmm. Was it that? When that could have been. Where I, was it? Was that? I think it was a memory. I think he was going off to get someone's memory. Yes, you're right. It um, was a memory. And I think you guys had the suggestion, how did he get that memory? He might have tortured the person and gotten the memory. Right. It also could have been mind reading or yeah, something sure. else. Yeah, yeah. But then we felt like from what we've seen of Dumbledore, he might not have been okay with mind reading. Mm. It might have been a breach of okay privacy. Okay torture, but not mind yeah, reading. Yeah. So we're like, <laughs> so I draw the what line. did he do? How did he do this? Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was it. I don't know. So you think Dumbledore didn't really have a plan. He might have been down. He might have endorsed Harry's... Uh, Harry's action here. I well, I'm a person that likes a plan, and I I want to know why. So like, it would be really hard for me to do anything off of what he gave. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> the clues he gave, I'd be yeah, like, like the clues I don't are really the know. Clues. And then also, it's like he said to hunt Horcruxes, but like, even when you're dead, or mm -hmm. should we be doing something else yeah. when you pass? I don't know. Yep. He could, or maybe he's not dead. <laughs> I, I I mean, when we had a blue eye in a mirror, and like, why didn't he see on, that? But... Maybe he did see that. <laughs> like, did he know he was gonna die when he went with Harry? Did he know something was gonna close, and it was going to be not a close, but the close? 
And it was a prophecy of some kind? Maybe. Oh Wait, the clothes. What the clothes? Well, I don't know, because the way he says the clothes, it could be just like uh, in an idea of something closing. It's, mm. oh, it's the clothes. The clothes of business. The, um, <laughs> the but, clothes of a door. <laughs> the, yeah, but but he also could be saying the clothes. Like, like the in a prophecy. Like in clothes. There was like yeah. a moment. <laughs> when <laughs> one of them clothes. died. Yeah, when amazing. Harry... Oh, he etched it wrong. I opened when Harry or... <laughs> oh my gosh. When Harry and Voldemort battle. And one of them dies. It opens. But what would that be the close of? Closing the close of, of a that prophecy. prophecy. <laughs> but how does a prophecy that it's like chapter. the closing of their life? <laughs> Could a prophecy? Yeah, that. <laughs> like that's a loose way. It opens at the close. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what, because again, it's like the close, not when there is a close. The close. Like close cap. Uh, close. Close captioning. <laughs> like if you turn the subtitles on. <laughs> um. <laughs> When when he's close, what about that? I Bolt. open at the close. It could be close. Could it be it? Could it be close? We've been saying it wrong this whole time. <laughs> at the close. <laughs> so it's weird. I'm like, I can't picture what that would mean. We'd have to be introduced to a whole other wizarding concept for that to make sense. No. But maybe we would be. It's a game called Close and Far. <laughs> you, be, you be the far, you be the close. Yeah. Chase me around. It's just... Uh, Open at the close. See? I just... I can't think of a way that it could be that, but I'm trying to get there. Got nothing. It's like Hermione had to be spelled out correctly. Yeah. Er- Hermione. Um, what is that? Oh, man, I don't know. But I... I like... That Harry was willing to stand up for McGonagall. Mm. It came from a good place. Um, she thinks I it was understand. foolish. She almost like yes. fell over when Luna popped out. Even she needed a seat. And then when uh, it's it's lovely because when Harry kind of explains things to her, he's like, uh, like um, she goes, "You're acting on Dumbledore's oh. orders." She repeated with a look of dawning oh. wonder. Then she drew herself up to her fullest height. We shall secure the school against he who must not be named while you search for this this object nice. is that possible i think so said professor mcgonagall dryly we teachers are rather good at magic you know <laughs> i'm sure we will be able to hold them off for a while if we all put our best efforts into it of course something will have to be done about professor snape then it says she marched toward the door and as she did so she raised her wand from the tip burst three silver cats with spectacle markings around their eyes the patronuses ran sleekly ahead filling the spiral staircase with silvery light as professor mcgonagall harry and luna hurried back down um completely unrelated question but because it brings up patronuses again i'm gonna ask you guys some just general theory stuff before we get into the next chapter because a lot of a lot of stuff happens in the next chapter what was the silver dough was it a patronus if it was a patronus who cast it was it something other than a patronus what did we say the first time it was a we said it was because we thought someone was behind the trees yes. somebody was behind the tree so who was it well, I, we but could it be an animagus room. person because isn't it mcgonagall yeah an anim- the only yeah a silvery you know, white animagus that would the only yeah the only issue was it was silvery white so everything that we've read to this point leads us to believe that it was a patronus but because danny is so untrusting it might indeed, not be a patronus <laughs> um <laughs> Do we know Moody's Patronus? Because that's, I was thinking about it this week, Moody and I would love Adele? to see Moody alive. <laughs> um, but I just can't think of why he wouldn't come it's out. A female, no. Whoever it was, I can't think of why they wouldn't come out. But again, it made me think things like, or is it a ghost? Grindelwald yeah, and whatever. Yeah, but honestly, that's not a bad idea, and that's what we were an saying An animal too. ghost. Potentially, can you come back as your Patronus as a huh, ghost? Interesting. Right, because we don't know a lot about it, but we that's do know weird. that like. There can be ghosts and there can be spirits and things like that were coming oh, out of the I wand. Oh, didn't I say it was Harry's mom? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that falls in there. Right. And and that's the kind of thing that we're like, well, we don't even know. Priori incantatum, the ghosts come out of the wand. <laughs> what happens thing. to those ghosts then? Do they just disappear? <laughs> or can they hold on to Earth for a little while longer and try and help their son as he battles the Dark Lord? But that would be like horcrux ish holding on to Earth for a little bit longer. It kind of would be. That's but true. But he's always said but that what happens to Dumbledore their probably has away? a positive horcrux. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Whatever that is. 
I don't actually think that's true, though, because how would you split yourself? Oh, positive? my gosh. You You're the one that, that brought it up. I'm oh, just repeating it. He was heartbroken after Ariana. I forgot. You said, I think I said that. Yeah. Um, See? He could just talk to himself. <laughs> but but the point is, I don't know who it could be. We have to give him word clues. Godric Gryffindor. Goes. Um, I think Godric Gryffindor is. Yeah, because the energy of the sword. Well, the sword, Wouldn't his yeah. Patronus be a lion? <laughs> oh, wait. Is that true? Like I feel like his would be a lion if anything mm. else, because that would it would make a lot of what sense. What if it's a goblin Patronus? <laughs> Can you do a Patronus without a wand? <laughs> and what would a goblin like Patronus be? Jen throws out be? these random theories, and Danny's like, "Ooh, <laughs> I like this." Um, Obviously, yeah. if it was a goblin Patronus, could it be a human? It wasn't though. I know. I'm just thinking theoretically. <laughs> um, what about? I was also thinking about the, <laughs> the centaur. Right. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good idea. Because they're part. They're part doe. <laughs> um, that is not a. They're a horse. I know. No, that's another horse. breed. That's what I'm saying. It's a horse, but it's like similar to a horse. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. We only know the big regal centaurs, but there are the less popular ones. <laughs> that are and they're like, uh, they're dope. Aren't yeah, those? Exactly. Uh, what was Mr. Tumnus a fawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy. <laughs> me Classic <laughs> Mr. Tumnus. Oh my gosh. Um. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just picturing. Or someone boy at the moment. Someone um, <laughs> that knew about the sword. He was that Mr. Tumnus. Oh. Who knew about the sword though? <laughs> Why James McAvoy? Okay, yeah, that's a great point. They have, they have I to know, know about the sword. I know nothing what you guys are talking about. <laughs> oh, so. yeah. Um, but the sword. Who knows about the sword? And was someone trying to bring I Harry to it? I feel like it has to, to be a Gryffindor. Like, someone older <laughs> that knows the... So, um, it could be someone who can conjure the sword. Yeah, I guess. But then yeah. why couldn't Harry conjure the sword? Is there someone who's more Gryffindor than Harry? What could, could it, it be? It? Um, Fox's Patronus. Fox, Fox <laughs> has a Patronus, and it's a different animal. Well, wow, Fox brought nice. the hat. Oh, the hat. The, the hat. sorting yes. hat. The sorting hat. Has the a sorting Patronus? hat was behind the tree right there. He wants along. every theory, so here <laughs> no, you no, go. Yeah, keep them coming. Well, um, only because when Harry was in trouble. Fox brought the hat that had the sword in it, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'm not that far. Finished. So he dropped it in the lake and then uh, hopped behind a tree, waited for it to come. <laughs> mm. Or who came up with the magic for the hat? Could oh Gryffindor? You think Gryffindor? Gra- Godric. Godric Gryffindor. Didn't they Wouldn't all create the all hat? Them? Yeah, I was gonna say. I know, but together. I'm saying part of it. Or what if it's Ravenclaw, and it's her Patronus? Okay, so you guys, you hmm. guys think that. Uh, someone who's dead can cast you wanted Patronus. this. No. Their Patronus can be around. I do not think I don't, so. Well. So it, does, does it, ha- like, it, that might be a possibility. Sometimes I think the Lily thing is kind of cool. Yeah. It, yeah, it feels like it could be, but even that, I'm not sure. And that's why. Well, that's why it's a theory. It is a good theory. <laughs> yeah. You almost but I just feel like a Patronus would be a doe, too. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, yeah, she seems like that personality. Doe yeah. <laughs> energy. Um, and I cannot Nurturing. believe that it would be Petunia, though. And that's that would be like oh my imagine? gosh! Well, that's what I was thinking. Of because, course, it's gonna be because you're always freaking throwing <laughs> no, no, these no, things out no. there, and I'm like, that's so weird. And then we're like, guess what, guys? Danny was right. <laughs> well, we've thrown out so many theories. We're bound to be right on something, but this feels too weird. And she wouldn't I, know about it. Yep, it couldn't think. be. It just couldn't be. And if it was, the ploy would be too big. It just doesn't make sense. Dumbledore well, could said, it what, be Dobby? Did Dobby Harry every Dobby was alive, right? At this point, he was at that point. Yeah, at but that point. How mm, we haven't seen other creatures with Patronus. Whatever. This is a theory. Hmm. But it, it could be a ghost. Weird. It could be a ghost, and Dobby could have told the ghost what to do. <clears throat> or a but, creature. Maybe wait, creature what? found someone. To help with them, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I, I hope know. one of these are right. And I'm just trying to think of all possibilities with an imperious. Could you imperious someone and get them to do a patronus? But or, it, um, to be positive, like a good yeah. thing. I don't know. Or can Death Eaters do a patronus? Like, could this be a, a ploy? Is there a reason not to trust the sword? Could the sword? Could have it have been? Kind of wait, trap? what's Percy's patronus? Nah. It must Would he be, be a doe? Adjacent. 
<laughs> Something but even <laughs> darker. <laughs> um, actually, what was Ron an otter, or was he? He was a Jack be a Russell weasel. Terrier. Oh, but Mister Weasley is, is a weasel. A weasel. Wait, I thought you were saying weasel adjacent because he's a weasel. Well, like, exactly. That's what I'm saying. But, okay, yeah. But then I'm like, but if the rest of his family is a weasel yeah, and he's good a weasel, weasels. Yeah. Then he would have to be like a a bad weasel. <laughs> <laughs> You're so weird. Like he can't just be like a normal cute weasel. Oh wait, it's Hermione who's an otter, right? Yeah, Hermione is an otter. Yeah. And then Ron is something that's cute with an otter because they're cute together. <laughs> He's a Jack Russell Terrier. Who have who uh, have uh, dog? No, and Jack an Russell otter? Terriers are famous for chasing otters. Really? Huh. Kind of cute. I don't know. They were famous for that, and someone brought that point up in like a Reddit thread a while ago, and they're like, you know, it's kind of cute, right? Huh. That is cute. I like Chase that. Chase otters. Wonder how much research went into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. How did they figure that out? So true. I don't know. I don't know. Like, what animals go with what? That's what she Googled. <laughs> so, give me just fi- a final guess. One person who you think, each for each of you, who you think this Patronus is. I like yours and mine. Wait, what's mine? Gryffindor. Godric Gryffindor. Oh, no, that's not mine. You literally started with that. <laughs> yeah, no, I you started with it. But he's, he's like number five on my list, maybe. <laughs> okay, And whatever. it's not because he's alive. Mine's Lily. I'm going to keep that. Okay, cool. I'm going to say Moody. Top guess. Moody is going to be a doe. Yeah, why not? He's very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I guess it makes more sense than anything else. It, only because I want him to be alive, and I feel like it would work, and there could be a reason he has to still pretend to be dead. That's why <laughs> it, like, mm, I want it to be him. He's a doe. That's the part you have the most trouble yes. with? Yes. <laughs> um, not that he's missing an eye out there in the world all by himself. No. Would it be um, a one-eyed doe? That's the real Whoa, question. Oh, that is a good question. Because I haven't seen anyone that has like an opposite sex Patronus. Have we? Interesting. That's a great. That's that a is good. a good point. It's also possible it already shed its antlers and it is a stag, <laughs> but out after shedding season. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Only because like most animals are like it doesn't matter (laughs) because you can't tell female male. But this is clearly a female. Feels like that's what it's saying. So that's what makes it weird. (laughs) Um, Fitting, but weird. Yeah, I don't think we've seen that any other time. But you're right. But would we even know any other time? Because all these other animals, you just wouldn't know. And then you're not getting up on oh, those. Now you're just getting on my. <laughs> you know I mean? Now you're taking my own evidence against me, Mr. <laughs> lawyer. But I still think it's Moody, so I'm not like changing anything. I feel like he's most likely. Um, that makes. But sense. I'm not. I'm not set on it. It's just a little bit of a hope, hope and a prayer. Mm. And when it closes, something comes out of the snitch. Something else falls into place. Moody jumps out from behind a rock. I'm here to save the day. So. <laughs> you just are hoping Moody's still alive. Maybe Moody's still inside the snitch, actually, and he was doing the Patronus the from inside <laughs> the snitch, and he's, he's been following with them along the whole time. Um, on that note, there's another line, <clears throat> and I want to know what you what you think of this person because it seems very dark. It says, "No, he's not dead," said uh, said McGonagall bitterly. Unlike Dumbledore, he was still carrying a wand, and it only seems to have. And, it, and he seems to have learned a few tricks from his master. With a tingle of horror, Harry saw in the distance a huge, bat-like shape flying through the darkness toward the perimeter wall. There were heavy footfalls behind them, and a great puffing slughorn had just caught up. So Snape is able to fly like Voldemort's able to fly. Is, but not quite like Voldemort. Yeah, not quite like him. But is he as dark as Voldemort? Yeah. He seems like it. Is he darker? Yeah, that's has the real he question. been a vampire hiding this whole time? Yeah, that's, that's a what I said. Because did he just learn how to do this, or has he been doing it this whole time but faking it and pretending mm. he didn't? Because vampires are a little ostracized. So, um, <laughs> well, yeah. Um. So well, his hair. Yeah. It just gives it away. And he's always walking around the hallways at night. He just doesn't mm. sleep. So vampire. Um, <laughs> and he just gives those vibes. 
Do vampires have uh that's why he has long hair to cover his ears. <laughs> that's why he didn't like Coral. Coral had garlic so like a a turban. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Um, it all fits. <laughs> covered his head. Hmm. Hmm. Cause so, it just feels like a weird trick. I'm also like well, he I guess he's good at magic and stuff, but I am having a hard time picturing Voldemort and him doing like a learning sesh like yeah. let's look. Let's but why is he like a that. huge bat? Like if that was his Patronus, which it's not. No, no, it would be a transformation. I meant kind. that like an animagus yeah, thing. Animagus, yeah. But wouldn't Wait, you be a mean, small bat? And yeah. you said Patronus. We don't know his Patronus. I didn't though. mean that. Because, but if you, but maybe it actually is, and that's also his animagus. So he could be an animagus. But why this is he could be just big? a transformation. It makes me think he's a vampire. Mm. If McGonagall Heart wanted vampire. to, could she turn? What into a if big Snape cat? was good and on Dumbledore's side, and then got bit by a vampire, and then turned <laughs> bad, and then traded, you know, sided with Voldemort? Because he's going to get that. Right. bit by a vampire. Which vampire? Ooh, Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> the, he could be the, the vampire. Maybe uh, he's dra- the one maybe at the, the, party the first that... line. No, you know what? He made a potion that he drank and he became part vampire. <laughs> Who made the potion? Snape. Oh, because he's good at it. He was trying things a vampire out. Vampire potion. Yeah. Okay. Look at you guys becoming more like each other in your yeah. marriage. <laughs> yeah. Jenna's going up with all sorts of crazy, crazy things. Now. Yeah, yeah. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said it has to stick. Something has to stick. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, because he could, his animagus, he, he might be transforming into an animagus here, but he might have just learned how to fly. So you don't really know what But he looks is. like a bat. I know. But his hair is gross, so I guess that could look like wings. Yeah. It just sticks together. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, like that. I, I but, think. Oh, like with his cloak, like the cape. Yeah, what you think it could be just something like that, like a, a bit of a parlor trick. Um, like he's flying kind of like Voldemort doing something funky with his cape. He's not actually a bat. Because sometimes I thought Snape might be more powerful than well, Voldemort. This is the kind of like thing... sneaky, right? Like he's waiting for the time. Well, yeah, because we were even speculating that it could be like that where he's trying to take over. Because if he can read minds better than Voldemort or whatever. Because we're like, could he betray? But then I was like. Can he read Voldemort's mind? I don't think so. Is he a better yeah, uh, wizard know. than Voldemort? Because then if he, he does, then why is he following him? I don't think he's better <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. than Voldemort. Sorry, what were you saying? But now? yours is great because he's trying to supplant him by following him. It's like, is he following him? And then like, you know, Voldemort, maybe Voldemort's like goes away and then all of a sudden Snape rises to power and it's like, that's oh, what I we keep have to, wondering. he's a more dangerous person. It is weird how it went down though because he didn't. It's like when Voldemort died, he didn't just take over and continue his mission. Mm. It's like he knew to wait more. Again, he could have had a prophecy of some kind, but I don't know. Couldn't he just been smart and like wait to see what happened? Like mm. you're just waiting to see who, like who what falls comes where. Out on top. And he knew that Voldemort wasn't dead dead, but just didn't know how to find him. Or maybe he didn't care for him to come back, but he wanted to see who was on what side. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. fair. As things settle. And I, I'm kind of equating it to like Star Wars things where like when you're evil, <laughs> if you're on the dark side, you know betrayal is kind of <laughs> it's in yeah, your yeah. wheelhouse. <laughs> so you're like, most of the, the dark people would expect to be overthrown by their apprentice at some point. Yeah. It's the way of things. So when your apprentice becomes strong enough to overthrow you, you duke it out, winner take all, and that's just normal. And maybe it's the same with Voldemort where he might even know at some point he'll be betrayed by somebody. Um but he only because he, in he can read everyone's mind. But if Snape is really good, I feel like there's hmm. that barrier that he might not. And he could play like, you know, his right hand for so long until he snaps. Mm. But he on him. I feel like Voldemort trusts Snape so much that there's something just like more. Dumbledore did. Yeah, but Dumbledore yeah. wouldn't do an unbreakable vow. Only like the evil people would or something yeah. because that's where I'm thinking Voldemort <laughs> knows something like that, you know, like they're willing to because binding someone because unbreakable, if you break it, you like die. Right. So in my mind, it's kind of that that's like an evil thing. Like uh, I want to have a vow that you literally can't get out of. But that's what I thought to, was so weird you. that Snape chose to do that with the Malfoys. Why was that so weird? He wanted he wanted 
Narcissa to know that he was going to take care of Malfoy, Draco. Mm-hmm. And he was willing to, like, make the promise. Yeah. So, I, again, that's what makes me think he's okay with making these unbreakable vows with the people who are also evil that align with his thing because he's like, he's already got a plan. He might have already been planning on overthrowing Dumbledore. So he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll make this vow because, look, I was planning on doing that anyway. And so hmm. he was just kind of, it, it was on the path that he was on. And that's what I'm thinking. That's why Voldemort can have this kind of trust because otherwise it doesn't make sense. He doesn't let anyone else that close. He doesn't trust people, but he still doesn't trust them with uh, Horcrux. No one knows about Horcruxes. Mm. Except Harry. And that scares him. Yeah. So. Hmm. Um, Do you trust Slughorn though? Because he comes up in this chapter a few times and there's this one where he says, my word, he puffed pale and sweaty, his walrus mustache a quiver. What a to do. I'm not sure whether all this is wise, Minerva. He is bound to find a way in, you know. And anyone who has, who has tried to delay him will be in most grievous peril. I shall expect you and the Slytherins in the Great Hall in 20 minutes also, said Professor McGonagall. If you wish to leave with your students, we shall not stop you. But if any of you attempt to sabotage our resistance or to take up arms against us within the castle, then, Horace, we duel to kill. Whoa. Minerva said, Minerva, he said aghast. The time has come for Slytherin House to decide upon its loyalties, interrupted Professor McGonagall. Go and wake your students, Horace. So do you trust him? Is he going to have like a bad role in this in the end? I trust him just a little bit more than I don't trust him. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I'm skeptical. 51, 49%? <laughs> I'll even say uh, 55, 60% wow, trust okay. him. <laughs> He's just a bit oafish maybe? I, I hope it's that. I do. Um, but I'm a little skeptical. Mm. And it feels like McGonagall. I'm, I'm basing it on McGonagall. It feels like she's in the same boat. She's saying, your time to choose is now, Horace. Almost like she knows there's a chance he could still betray them. Mm. But she's not worried about it. But she's saying, you know, go get your students and this this is your moment. You know, choose. And I wouldn't be surprised if he came back with the students, but not all of them. Yeah. If some left when they figured out what was going Interesting. on. Interesting. So you think some Slytherins are going to stay? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I definitely Fight think some will stay. Against. What? You mean like choose the Death Eater side? I'm saying some will stay to be loyal to Hogwarts and some will leave to choose the Death Eater side. And if they don't yeah, leave already... Yeah, because they all come from Slytherin be anyway. Because <laughs> you, you can't trust the Slytherin. So let's say Draco doesn't leave. Crab, Goyle, if they don't leave and they come in like, yeah, let's get ready to fight. Pretty nah, sure Draco and his family is like dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Draco maybe never came back to school. So. <laughs> but Crab and Goyle, I don't know. So any of those guys, you can't have them fighting against their flesh and blood on the other side. There's not enough trust there. Um, you don't want them betraying you mid-battle. So I'd say, nah, you can... Mm, you don't want to lock them away. But at least send them away. <laughs> um, but the rest of the Slytherins, they can be... Good. So, yeah, so the next, we, you know what the next chapter is called. It's the Battle of Hogwarts. And I want to talk about a few predictions. But before we talk about predictions, I do want to ask one more question for this one, which is um, what did you think about Percy's reunion? Only a little bit skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, this is supposed to be such a heartfelt Honestly, moment. Honestly, it was a heartfelt yeah, yeah. moment. I did like it. Um, well, you might want to give him a little bit of truth serum or something. <laughs> He goes, there was, a, there was a scuffling and a great thump. Someone else had clambered out of the tunnel, overbalanced slightly and fallen. He pulled himself upon the nearest chair, looked around through lopsided horned rim glasses and said, am I too late as it started? I only just found out. So I, I, Percy spluttered into silence. Evidently, he had not expected to run into most of his family. And there's a lot of silence in that moment. And he goes, I was a fool, roared Percy, Percy so loudly that Lupin nearly dropped his photograph. I was an idiot. I was a pompous prat. I was a a, a ministry-loving, family-disowning, power-hungry moron, said Friend. Percy swallowed. Yes, I was. Well, you can't say fairer than that, said Fred, holding out his hand to Percy. Mrs. Weasley burst into tears. She ran forward, pushed Fred aside, and pulled Percy into a strangling hug. Well, he patted her on the back, his eyes on his father. Lovely. You guys like that moment? You don't trust Percy? I did like it. <laughs> but I was looking serum. for any clues that there was some uh, <laughs> This bad is Voldemort intention. in disguise. But the way he did say it, 
made me think, all right, he could actually mm. be good. Um, sounds like he really came around. And I don't think of him as being a good actor, so he would uh, <laughs> he would not be able to pull this off to his people if he was being uh, sly. Okay. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? As <laughs> you take a sip, a chug, <laughs> swig, that's the better word. Um, oh, I underlined where he said, I only just found out. And I said, can we trust him? How did he find out? <laughs> yeah. I only just found out what. Well, he tell, he says how he found out. He found out from uh, Aberforth. Okay, yeah, yeah. So then he does say that, but that feels kind of a little bit weird. Aberforth is a little sketchy. So Yeah, yeah, like exactly. That. And like, how did he find out from Aberforth? <laughs> um, um, and then one of the final ones, where did Ron, Harry, and Hermione, or why, where did Ron and Hermione go? They went to the bathroom. Where Where are they, though? Why did they just all of a sudden get up and leave? Oh, aren't they going to like the Chamber of Secrets? That's what I can think. Yeah, thinking. that's what you guys said during the live read. That they think we think it was the Chamber of Secrets. Oh yeah, I did put the Chamber question mark. Why though? Because there's something there, a Horcrux. But John, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> there's something hidden you know in what? the deep depths of blah blah blah, and Hermione <laughs> knows from the history books, and she's gonna open it up. From the history. And books. then he's gonna open it at the close. He's gonna open it. Um, this is so good. I was gonna say the Deluminator was guiding Ron, and they just ran off. Oh, interesting. Um, nice. You're probably right. But how? <laughs> it's so annoying. Because I'm just thinking, what? Like, even if Hermione did remember something, what are the chances it would just be like an epiphany in the moment? Something. Would She's have to great. It, yeah. But what would that thing be? A comment from anyone, but it's something like, we would have to like. We have I don't to know. see, or like, <laughs> you could say one thing and it triggers another. Like no, no, that is true. how things happen. Dan. But what was said, and what was triggered? <laughs> Who cares? It was said. I do. <laughs> so what was right, said? Percy owned up to it. Respect. When Percy appeared, and he said something, I managed to make contact with Aberforth. Um. And that's what she heard, and she ran to the chamber. Well, I don't know. They said something about a bathroom. So they kind of said where they were going? Something about a bathroom. Or did they go to talk to Moaning Myrtle? That's mm. what I thought of, too. She is a good person to talk to, along with, the with uh, all the other ghosts. Because she's always in the bathroom. Yeah, and she knew Tom Riddle. So, so I true. thought of that too. Yeah, that's a, a good call. That that could be Does the that reason. suffice it for you? It, kind of, but I'd still <laughs> want to know what initiated. Mm. Like they're just sitting there and they're like, "Let's go talk to Moaning Myrtle." Or was it more of like, "Well, we don't want to sit here doing nothing, so let's just explore." Why don't you options. ask J.K. and maybe she'll tell you. Um, maybe I hope she tells maybe they're us really in anyway. the bathroom, just in the bathroom. Um, yeah, they might have just had to go. You know, <laughs> some just didn't agree with them. Or what about the wizarding, the wi <laughs> the wizarding cup, the wizard cup? What the heck was that? Yep. What about the wizard cup? Remember when they went? Oh no, that has nothing to do with the it bathroom. though. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was thinking of the morn moaning Myrtle with Harry in the big tub when he had the egg. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to walk to the bathroom. The oh, big. Mind, so I'm not going to even. That was the <laughs> 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 Morning Myrtle, is that you? Sorry, Harry. It's oh, I didn't even Ooh. put that together. <laughs> oh. This is a children's book. I know, I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> that. Um. Hmm. So those are my guesses. They're interesting. And Danny theories. So gave none. They're going to talk to Myrtle. What are they talking? To, so I'm going to go through all your theories real quick. They're talking to Myrtle. What are they talking to Myrtle about? Where do you think the deepest, darkest place you can hide something in Hogwarts is? Okay. Interesting. Yeah, maybe even just asking her to look for the crown. Or did mm -hmm. Tom Riddle have a favorite spot in Hogwarts? Okay. Ooh, yeah, that's great good. questions. Yeah. Uh, let's say they are going to the Chamber of Secrets. How do they even get into the Chamber of Secrets? It's probably still open. Probably no one fixed <laughs> it. it. <laughs> because janitors <laughs> don't do that. Um, or even if they didn't go in the chamber, Myrtle might be able to. Yeah. Um, for them. But did it say it was sealed? It might have. 
It was Otherwise, sealed? they could just turn the tap and were, open it up, that's right? That's what I thought they no, were. No, it's parcel tongue. They'd have to speak parcel oh, tongue in order to do it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. All right, right I like okay. my moaning myrtle thing better. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe they recorded it. Yeah, maybe. Like, nice. open at the close. <laughs> Harry and they talks played or it. Like that, and Ron is like, just hanging out there with a the recorder. <laughs> I already spoke power parcel tongue when we he was leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Except they don't do that, right? They have no technology. Well, yeah, they can exactly. do it in the form of a howler. There you go. There you go. Something along those lines. Oh, my. Okay, so. Uh, Omnioculars uh, might be able to pull it off. Too. A few. Um, I'm a nerd. I'm going to ask a few next chapter questions. But before we do that, do you have anything else in this chapter? Before we we're, we do a few random questions that are really quick, like rapid fire. And then uh, the final wrap-up questions. Where we was this the last chapter? No. No. Um, nobody has seen it in living memory. Talking about um, the... Uh, crown. The crown. The okay. diadem. Uh, but maybe... Fulmel. Tiara. Nicholas Fulmel uh, is older than everyone else. So... Okay. He might pop point? through and they might know from him. <clears throat> so, yeah. Something like that, maybe. I also love that uh, McGonagall has triple Patronus action going on. Yeah, that was fascinating. Three cats jumping yeah. out. I'm like, is that just super advanced? Mm-hmm. Um, or do they kind of work as one? Um, and can they really withhold like the dark magic coming into the Hogwarts? Yeah. Right. Are they going to be yeah. able to stop this at all? They're good, but I are they mean, that good? And even they say, we'll masses. just slow them down, yeah. but maybe not stop it. <clears throat> um, and what is each teacher really good at? Yeah. There's a, That'll I'll spoil one little movie moment because it's like it's such a cute moment. But when McGonagall says Pier Totem Locomotor, you remember what that spell does? <laughs> yep, <laughs> I definitely do. <laughs> it has all the uh, suits of armor leap into action and he, she says, oh. protect the school, man the boundaries, do your duty to this school. As soon as she says that, she turns back to another character and she goes, I've always wanted to use that spell. Yeah, it's that's so, so cute. Great. It's such a great moment in the movies. Aww. Waiting on these spells for the yeah. right moment. Um, when the Caro brother thinks his sister is dead and McGonagall has to say she's just been stunned, I can't tell if that's because McGonagall is just so much better than them mm. or if there's like something weird like they're just not even good wizards. It made me think Death Eaters are kind of just subpar wizards a little bit. Mm, where yeah. McGonagall, well, obviously, of course she's they're great, following Voldemort. But like, yeah, it just kind of reinforces <laughs> well, like except for Snape. this weird thing. That's because he wants to overthrow him. Yeah, yeah. Where, but where these Death Eaters are just like kind of followers and like, I don't know if they're outcasts or whatever, but it just feels like another definitely example. Definitely are. That's also Snape. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. Um, so all the above. I also thought it was weird. Where do did someone say that go? though? Like you're almost reminding me of a Death Eater. Wasn't that in the previous chapter? Mm-hmm. Oh, who reminding who of a Death Eater? Someone that was good or a student. That I don't know. That was all I got. So mm-hmm. you, it's I, somewhere. I know what you're talking about. I can't remember what that was. It though. was. Uh, it was. Um, oh, was it? Ab with Abbeforth? Mm. I think it was with uh, the. The and goblin the picture. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't remember. I remember what you're talking about though, but I can't remember what it's that basically was. saying. Like, like you're so dumb. You're like a death. You're reminding yeah, me yeah, of a yeah. death Everforce eater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Ron, Ron is like, oh, your Patronus was the dough, and he's like, I literally just did my Patronus like two seconds ago. Yeah, with yeah, brains yeah. like that, you can oh, be a death eater. Yep. See. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at that recall. <laughs> it's rare. Um, I think that was uh, <laughs> that was all I had. Oh, I just said, where do vanished objects go as being the riddle feels like a weird one. Because hmm. I thought they were going to say the room of requirement or something else. Yeah. But then it's just a riddle. I was like, okay. Non-being. All right. Weird. So, Danny brought up this theory. Um, some of the Slytherins are going to come back. Which students will stay and which students will go? Let's go like, not we're not going to go through the students. We'll go through house <laughs> by house. Do you think any Slytherins will stay and fight? Because the stay next chapter is called fight. the Battle of Hogwarts. This is when a battle happens, obviously. I feel like most of them are going to leave. Will mm. any stay back? I think some. some will. I'm just trying to think, do we know any? I'd love a good old Jane What if it's Hart. just Slughorn? <laughs> but you think he'd go anyway. The problem is the way Slytherins are now. <laughs> the problem with Slytherins. How would you hang out and just be a Slytherin 
with all these other terrible kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could you stay? Well, that's why Slytherin just, just, just should not exist. Will cut off. <laughs> will uh, will Raven? Will all Ravenclaws <laughs> stay? How many Ravenclaws will stay? I think everyone except Slytherin. Hmm. So you think everyone's gonna stay like full on stay? Who can stay and fight except for Slytherin? Or are you saying people are leaving for protection? Do like, you think some people will leave protect for protection? Probably afraid. Yeah, I think some people will leave from every house, kind of. Hmm. But I'm in my mind, just my natural thought would be. 20% of the kids who are of age of every house would leave, but then it'd be the opposite, like 80% leave of Slytherin. Okay. Well, all the young Maybe kids. Are they all in the Great Hall just like... I have no idea. Down? Yeah, so everyone, no, they, they're sent home. They're going to put oh, them... Oh, Ginny, right? Yeah, they're putting them back through the... Um, to Aberforth, and they're going to yeah, apparate away okay, right, in right. Aberforth's uh, little place. So yeah. they're all being sent home. They're being sent away, home, wherever they're being sent, they're being sent away. Um, all the kids above 18 can fight. So like do percentages. How many of Slytherin do you think will stay? How many will leave? I think 15. 25. Stay. 15, 25 will stay? will stay, yeah. Okay. How much of Ravenclaw will stay? 50. 50, interesting, okay. Maybe they, yeah, maybe they'll look at this from just the intelligence of it and say, we can't win. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I want to say they're all going to stay. I want all the to, Hufflepuffs but... Hufflepuffs will stay. They're very loyal. Well, I was thinking Hufflepuff, yeah, Gryffindors but and also no one knows. So you think like, all, Huff, all, all Hufflepuffs will stay? Yeah. They're like team people. Mm. Team people. <laughs> Do you think all Gryffindors will stay? They're brave, so yeah. yeah they should. I don't know yeah. if I would, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> they be like, would. I'm 17. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the people we know. Is is they're like all Slytherin. already in there. Like it's like Neville, and well, that's the only person I know that's another. <laughs> 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 like who is in the DA? Um, Cho is a Ravenclaw, right? Uh, I was gonna say Hufflepuff, but wait, what is she? Maybe she is Ravenclaw. Actually, yeah, she is she. I'm forgetting. Um. I would hope a lot of people stay. I just don't expect anything out of Slytherins. Yeah, yeah, I do not expect. But maybe much we would be surprised because they're like, we they gave us a bad name. These Death Eaters. We're gonna yeah, show yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I keep thinking about, like the loyalty of the school, the whatever. That'll be a big moment of. I hope so. They're not like Slytherin. Spoiling our view of them, or are they actually bad apples? Um. So. On top of that, it is it's going to be a dangerous thing for them to fight. Obviously, they're fighting <laughs> Death Eaters and they're fighting Lord Voldemort <laughs> and they're fighting Snape. They're fighting these wizards who are <clears throat> far advanced and far more skilled than them. And we've brought up this question before, but do you think anybody will die in the in the next next few chapters? Like, is it uh, are like it is there to. that much peril that there will be people who die in the next few chapters? Yeah, probably next few but i hope like it's all like book, bad sure. ones though okay then i'll be fine with so them. give me a list of some characters that you think might die bad ones all of them yeah i was gonna say <laughs> almost ears. all of them you know who might survive Snape. the malfoys interesting only because we felt a little bad for them by the uh, end but not narcissa and you know what right that's her name one of the top three could survive i'm saying uh bellatrix voldemort snape I wouldn't be surprised if one of them could be sent to Azkaban or Azkaban equivalent by the end of this. Um, Why would you keep them alive? Just if you want to make more books later. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's why they're going to die. Because this is the last one. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, and I feel like she kind of did say this was going to be last. So maybe they do all have to die. Um, what if the Malfoys turn on their sister? What if they kill Narcissa, Bellatrix? Mm. Draco yeah, kills Bellatrix. Whoa. That would be interesting. That's dark. Um, no, it's revenge. <laughs> and that's that's dark. Because well, um, you got to watch and everything. You know? well, we watched another movie that's fine. Yeah, with I it. love The Count of Monte Cristo, too. Ooh, um, great one, yeah. Never saw that. Or we're going to have to watch it. First time watchers. Yes. Um, I was talking about Rebel Moon. Oh, Rebel Moon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
Do you think anybody who's good will die? Yeah. Ugh. Give me a list. I don't want to. <laughs> mm. It could it could it be the top three? Could it be Harry, Ron, mm. Hermione? What about Ginny? Or any of the Weasleys? No, you know what? Maybe Cho though. Fred. <laughs> oh, that's fine with me. Well, I'm just saying, because then it's like a little closure. Yeah. That's harsh. Um <laughs> Neville, that'd be sad. You know what? Luna, McGonagall, so or Flitwick, probably. Um, but they're older, teacher, so they live well, their exactly, life. Exactly, but like, they're we sacrificing. We almost feel okay about it, but there's yeah. gonna be pain. Definitely pain. Um, but who? Who's the painful one? Moody comes back, but then dies. Um, Lupin. Are, I'm actually just curious for this too. Who are <clears throat> your top three favorite characters in the series so far? That's what the heck of a question is that? <laughs> what do you mean what kind of a question is that? Uh, if you're saying favorite, meaning ones I definitely don't want to die. No, no, no. I'm just asking like just generally. Just like people yeah, I yeah, generally yeah. like. Yeah. Who like are just your favorite? And I'm not saying that they're I like die, Lupin obviously. and I liked the trio. Okay. And Ginny's up there too. Oh, and Luna. There's Ron. my. <laughs> <laughs> Game six. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Ron is my favorite. Okay. Um, now. There have been moments in some of the books where yeah. I was like, Ron. But yeah, I think Ron is my favorite. And then people like Neville and Tonks are high up there. Um, Luna is pretty high up there. She's, again, a little bit of a wild card. Ginny. So there are moments. Ginny, I like her. He's given more than three, too. But she's never been that <laughs> yeah. high on my list. So those those are my three. Ron, uh, Neville, and... Hmm. Mr. Weasley. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Weasley. Yeah, but she's not for me. She's not top five. <laughs> it was um, only top three, and we made it top five. Well, no, no, I'm, I already have a top five, kind of, just like theoretically. Um, I'm just trying to think and make sure it's accurate because McGonagall is up there for me. Percy mm. sacrifices himself because he turned oh, on his family. He owes them. Yeah. Oof, that would be intense. It would be. Yeah. Um, I could Fred see and George, Seamus are your favorites. Dean, oh, Neville, they oh, you're talking die. about death. Yeah, we went back to death. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> I like Fred and George too. There's too many. I, I can't do like pick. Fred and George. Oh no. What? One of them could definitely. Well, because they're twins. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's such a sad no, way I of know, looking that at is it. So harsh. <laughs> but I'm just saying, from a literary perspective, <laughs> it would like make a lot of sense it would simplify because they're twins no more confusion well it's it's like a way that you can kill a character it's like one person you know like it's terrible i I hate to say it but they barely are (laughs) the the only way we tell them apart is one's missing an ear you know what i mean it's like this is wild <laughs> like they were never separated. We just know Fred's a little more talkative, yeah. you know, and a little, a little braver. So that's what I'm just saying. Now that you said that, I'm like, shoot, one of them is gonna die. Um, I just, oh, that does stink. Um, <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Oh no, but it, not for sure because we could still see. There's still fun things you can do with you twins. Just <laughs> but I was just like, that actually does stink because that would make a lot of sense. Um, because they're close enough to the main characters that we would feel the pain. It would hurt, but we'd be able to recover from it because... Yeah, but she's killed off main <laughs> characters too, so it doesn't even um, matter. Um, but at- she can't kill anyone else more main than them though. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Harry obviously can die. He's been preparing for What if it. Fox comes back to help fight? That'd be mm. great. But yeah, how? that was kind of my next question. Just give me a general thing of what you think is going to happen in the next chapter. I think <laughs> everyone's going to protect Hogwarts, so it doesn't even matter who they're against. Hmm. Wait, sorry, what do you mean? Like the ghosts, the oh, portraits, oh, nice. the creatures, the... What about the little... the What are they called? Like house creature... Elves? Yes, house Whoa, elves. Cool. That'd be cool. They're fighting? Yeah. You think You think they should fight? I think fight, they or all should, should fight. Food? Well, yes, they should free will choose if they want to fight, but I think yeah, they nice. would fight. Yeah, yeah. slave fighters. Um, no, you're right. I At feel their like own free will. There are a lot of little curveballs, um, and like I feel like the Hogwarts would fight itself. 
like, like the school itself. Yeah. <laughs> like the rooms given. would turn into. <laughs> um, no, you're right. And uh, the furniture, like in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah I love that. Comparison. I was like, why does this sound familiar? Yeah. Um, I love that it mentions too, there were, there's like suits of armors for animals and the, the suits of armor for animals jumps up and like yeah, is ready to protect cool. the castle too. It's great. Yep. I think that's what will happen. And then we find the clothes where it opens. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the weird part. I feel like they maybe still it opens up the clothes anything. of the school. Hmm. Is is that now? Is, like or a like certain they go like to the front area. Door and they actually, like close the door and put a know. lock on it, and that's like the clothes. Or go to Dumbledore's office. <laughs> All right. Well, keep theorizing. Let's go into favorite. Uh, who's your favorite character? Hot Tamale and um, favorite moment in this chapter. And then we're just gonna listen because we don't want to be here. Super oh, yeah. late, because you guys can theorize for the next chapter for till the cows come home. Do you have a time frame? No. Okay, I didn't know. Easy peasy. <laughs> we don't no, have no, that no. time anymore. I thought you were picking up someone. Oh, I was gonna pick up your brother from the airport. <laughs> oh, really? Um, but then Tonight? his flight got delayed, so it that's was... why I told him I can't pick him up on Tuesday night because we're <laughs> not so Come on, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm free now. <laughs> Okay, no. I just wanted to bring that up. That's so his, funny. His flight got moved. Oh, um, my brother. And then, and then your dad could pick him up now because <laughs> okay, the flight yeah. got moved to a time oh, that worked funny. better or whatever. Is so it, he is texted it later me like an hour or two ago. I think got moved earlier in okay. the day. And so <laughs> he was, right. instead of that airport, sure. was going to that airport. Um, <laughs> and I, and at first when I was reading the message, I was like, I don't want to go to that airport. And then he's like, so my dad's going to come get me. I said, sad I won't get time with you, but very <laughs> glad I don't have to do That's that. That's funny. Um, I just want to make sure you remember. Anyways, great <laughs> reminder. Thank you um, for keeping me on track. <laughs> he said no. I know. He texted me like two days ago. He's like, can you pick me up from the airport on Tuesday? And I was like, nope. I got a recording. <laughs> But you definitely have more work involved with this. But see, that's just so telling. At the end, I'm just like, time to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John's like cleaning up around yeah, yeah, yeah. and shutting everything down. <laughs> Editing videos. All um, right, uh, give me hot tamale of this chapter. McGonagall, McGonagall. Mm. I just took yeah. away the Mick. <laughs> Gonagall. <laughs> She's great in this chapter. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm going to give her the house cup, so I'm trying to think if there's anyone else with the hot tamale energy. Um, you, she could be a triple threat. I, I was going to say, she mm. she might get both. Yeah. The only other thing I was going to say was, yeah. did Luna stun somebody? Yeah, Luna stunned uh, the, one of the, the Karos. Alexa Caro. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and she's like, oh, I've never done that to a real person. Yeah. Only in the DA's training. So oh. I thought that was like funny <laughs> because forgot. it was so like, boom. So that was Look that at Harry's Tamale, training like, worked. I know. It's true. Yeah. Um, great. So... I feel like I, I want to recognize that moment. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, she'll get hot tamale from me. I like that. I'm yeah. I'm going uh, Ginny actually for hot tamale. Wow. Oh yeah, she's, she's in like, it. Trying to fight and she can't. It was great. And then she's, she's like, so "Fine, mom, so I'll go." Sad. Yeah, yeah. I love her passion on that. It's great. I feel like it's probably good because she could be on the outside, and if she, they really need help, she yeah. come. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Um, who is your favorite character? Mm. I'm going McGonagall. McGonagall. Yeah, me too. That's what I'm saying. I think she's getting all three for me. It's such a good chapter. It's such a yeah. good McGonagall chapter. Yeah. It's like the chapter we've been waiting for. I know, seriously. She yeah. also has like such a good name. Yeah. <laughs> like how she so picks true. her name. Yeah. yeah. McGonagall. McGonagall. Um, what's your favorite cool. moment in this chapter? McGonagall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mine was Percy's redemption. Yeah. Mm, nice. So Harry good. Yeah. Oh There's yeah, yeah. Them. See, that's yeah, what that I mean. Yeah. McGonagall, the passion. Yeah. But McGonagall and and Snape kind of fighting. I feel like that moment, or like McGonagall trusting Harry. Like I think from Harry's oh, yeah. reveal and that, like, oh my goodness, what are you doing here? And then like, wait, Dumbledore told you like that trust. Something about she it. She didn't even like ask like, questions after that, right? Right. It reminded me of when Harry was having that bad dream, and she just like jumped to action. You know, where he's like. Uh, Mr. Weasley's in trouble. We need to take action right now. And she was like, all right, let's do this. So same kind of thing. There's just a bond and trust that I loved. So yeah, I feel like that reveal was, mm. was my favorite. I love that. Well, thanks for joining us on this journey of Harry Potter and the first time readers. Let's listen. Let's listen wow. in. Whoa. Wait, right. can I, uh, I, I need We're going to take a breather, get a bathroom break, and then we'll listen. <laughs> thanks. You know, probably. 
take bets, I'm gonna say I'm gonna take a bet 100 no, but it's just a matter of how long. Yeah. You know? How many? Over <laughs> under five and a half minutes. You know. I'm having mic issues. Um, okay, let me solve this. Uh, everyone jump into the next stream. I'll have a link for it. We're going to listen to the chapter there. Jump into the Discord. Um, yeah, Myrtle break. Myrtle. <laughs> Did you say Myrtle break? Yeah, someone said Myrtle break on here. Because <laughs> they're like going to the bathroom. Yeah. Go visit uh, Morning 